Hello, Team Humanity. I'm Roland B. Hunt, and you're listening to The Next Chapter. The Next Chapter looks at where we seem to be headed on this little blue planet, do we really want to go there, and what are our options. For the past several weeks, we've been considering the causes of violence in modern society, especially violence motivated by religious belief. Why do we seem to have so much of it now, and how can it be reduced? As I've noted earlier, a lot of the religion-inspired violence is caused by the lack of integration of Muslims into the societies of Western Europe, and to a lesser extent, the U.S. Young unemployed males without jobs cannot get married and start a family. When the situation begins to look more and more hopeless, they're easily recruited into radical jihadist movements. And, of course, the problem in Europe is that there aren't enough jobs for everyone else in the society, let alone Muslims. We have the same problem here. Good-paying jobs that don't require exceptional scientific and technological skills are becoming increasingly scarce. I got tired of watching all the meaningless political banner on the main cable news channels, so I switched over to CNBC, the financial channel, to see what was happening at the annual World Economic Summit in Davos, Switzerland. This is the one that attracts all the billionaires and CEOs from the world's biggest corporations. Reportedly, 1,700 private jets showed up for the festivities this year. Switzerland's a small country. Can you imagine how hard it must be to find space to park 1,700 jets? Turns out the Swiss government had to open up a military base to accommodate them all. According to the press coverage for the past few days, the Davos crowd are deeply concerned about the growing concentration of wealth in the world. You might ask, why would these folks care? According to a study that just came out, next year the top 1% is going to own one half of all the wealth on the planet. I'll say that again. 1% of humans will own one half of all the wealth on Earth. Supposedly, the top 1% is concerned that if the world collapses into chaos, things will not go well for them. War and revolution are not exactly something to look forward to. A lot of their wealth is tied up in things like stocks and bonds and currency, which would, of course, be worthless. If history's any guide, great mansions usually don't fare very well either. After they've been looted, as often as not, they're burned to the ground. All the great playgrounds of the rich and famous would not be where you'd want to show up, either in your luxury jet or yacht or Bentley. So, interviewers were asking these good people what they think should be done to address this wealth inequality problem. The answers were revealing. A founder of one of the big internet companies said, well, we should help out those who get displaced, but really, it's all about progress. When change comes, some people will do well and others won't. The buggy whip makers will just have to find new jobs. Hmm, why do I think I've heard that kind of thinking before? Let them eat cake, too? Bill Gates, the richest man on the planet, offered the idea that we really need to improve educational systems around the globe so workers will be ready for all the new jobs that will be created. To Mr. Gates' credit, he's pledged to eventually give away most of his wealth, but does he sound a bit disconnected from the real world? Intelligent machines are eliminating jobs for humans permanently. Unless jobs are consciously and deliberately created, there won't be any. Those who come to Davos are, for the most part, not old money, people who inherited great wealth, but entrepreneurs and bankers and financiers who have amassed their billions in the golden age of technology. They're pretty smart people. You would think they would be a little bit more in touch with reality. wonder when they'll wake up. Or will they? I explore these subjects in greater detail on my website. Just go to weru.org, click on Program Notes at the top of the page, And then the next chapter. Some ideas to ponder as you drive to work this morning. I'm Roland B. Hunt.